I didn't realize the amount of pressure I was putting on myself and I didn't realize that the way I was feeling most of the time was anxious. I was really living in a hypervigilant state. These practices are so, so important to me to be doing on a daily basis. I always know when I miss a day, I'm completely off. My anxiousness kicks in, my thoughts start spiraling, and it makes such a difference to just add this half hour in the morning and about a half hour to an hour in the evening to my daily routine in order to feel better about my life and feel better about myself and just live life differently. Before I started doing a lot of the mental health practices that I currently do, I always thought the practices kind of sounded a bit weird. I never thought that they would make a difference for me. And it was only once I had my daughter and I was going in a very big downward spiral and I decided one day that things needed to change that's when I started seeing a massive uplift in my mental health and the way I feel. So prior to having my daughter, I was living life like a lot of people. A lot of my goals were ego-driven, materialistic. I didn't realize the amount of pressure I was putting on myself. And I didn't realize that the way I was feeling most of the time was anxious. I was really living in a hypervigilant state. And to be honest, I didn't even know what hypervigilance was. It's only recently since I started doing the practices and I've started researching this a bit more and started following people on social media that talk about this, that I now know how I was living prior to doing a lot of the inner work and a lot of the practices that I do now. So I knew that I needed to make a change in my life when my thoughts were so, so negative and I was being really, really hard on myself. I remember about a year after my daughter was born, I was in the bathroom and I was looking in the mirror and I was saying really mean things to myself. I was thinking really mean things to myself. I was saying things like, who do you think you are? You're not good enough. You're horrible. You're a bad person things like this, like really, really heartbreaking, self-abusive things. And I remember just crying, just staring at myself in the mirror and crying and sitting on my bed and thinking, what am I doing? Why am I doing this to myself? Why am I making myself feel this way? And in that moment, I decided that enough was enough and I didn't want to feel this way. And I didn't know what I needed to do in order to get the help that I needed, but I knew that I needed to do a little bit of research and just look at things that I could start doing for myself at home. Therapy was an option, but it's not something that I really wanted to do. So I figured, let me just try some things at home. And if these things don't work, then I'll look at something a little bit more deeper like therapy. So at that time I went onto TikTok and I was scrolling through the feed and someone was talking about shadow work and I 100% believe that the universe will show you what you need to see at the times that you need it. And when you make statements like, I want to change my life, I can't live like this anymore and you choose to make that difference in your life and to take that step forward, the universe will support you in any way that it can. It's up to you to then see these opportunities and take them. So anyways, I was sitting on TikTok and I was going through TikTok and someone came up talking about shadow work. And I thought, oh, this sounds kind of cool. And then I scrolled a little bit more and another video came up about shadow work. So I thought, okay, let me look into this a little bit more. I Googled shadow work. I learned a little bit more about it. And I found a website on YouTube that had a bunch of shadow work prompts. Right then and there, I opened my journal up and I started answering these prompts. And so I answered them the best that I could. But even though it was surface level, it still helped me massively. It really helped me just understand myself a little bit more. And so going forward from there for about three weeks, I did it every single day. I would answer a question. And the more I did it, the deeper I got, the more I learned how to ask myself the right questions and really dive in deep into where 
certain thoughts that I had, certain judgments that I had, and the way I thought, the way I reacted to situations, where this stems from. So let's get started in the practices that I do every morning. Now, I just want to make a note that these are the practices that work for me. I obviously recommend them to everyone, but you need to really practice different things and see what is best for you and what really, really resonates for you. I've been doing this for a few years now. I've tried a lot of different things, but these are the things that I do in my daily routine that set me up perfectly for the day and that make me feel calm, present, and just in love with life. So the first thing that I do every morning when I wake up, as soon as I open my eyes is a grounding and protection bubble exercise. So what I do with this is that I imagine roots growing out of my legs. So basically from my waist, going all the way down through my legs, down into the earth, down to the core of mother earth and connecting to mother earth and me sending any energy, any unwanted energy down and it transmuting into pure love from mother earth on its way down. Then as soon as mother earth receives it, it comes back up to me. She gives me her energy, um, which is like fresh and minty and full of love. And this always makes me feel so grounded and makes my energy really calm down. And every morning when I do this, it just sets me up really nicely throughout my day. I also, at the same time, imagine a bubble around me. And in this bubble, it's a bubble of protection, protecting myself from other people's energy and from any harm. As I'm going throughout my day, I'm meeting different people, I'm driving, I'm walking. I also imagine myself just clearing out foreign energy from my field and calling all my energy back to me. One thing that I will mention that I have learned through doing all the practices is that your imagination is so, so powerful. When I first started doing these visualizations, I was so confused because I hadn't used my imagination for such a long time. I wanted someone to tell me exactly what I should think. I was like, okay, grounding. So how are these, how are these roots growing? Are they like growing out, like spiraling around my legs? Are they spiraling down to the earth? Are they just going straight down to the earth? What does mother earth's core energy look like? Like I wanted specifics. What I realized is that your imagination is so powerful in not just like visualizing your future life and that manifesting that, but also in these sort of exercises that you're doing. So if you are new to this and you like me have a hard time visualizing and using your imagination, then I recommend just going with whatever comes to you. If it's not roots that you visualize coming out of your legs, what is it? Is it like a slinky around your waist that's going down to mother earth and it's sort of protecting you as it goes down? What is it that comes to you? I always feel that's the universe or your highest self helping you out when you think of these types of things. So this exercise I do on a daily basis throughout the day, whenever I feel like I need it. I 100% do it in the morning and right before I go to sleep, but I also do it three or four times throughout the day just to keep me grounded and focused and protected wherever I am. The next thing that I started doing about a month ago is that I have cut coffee pretty much out of my diet. I have coffee once, maybe twice a week now because I actually really love coffee. But what I noticed is that when I don't have coffee, I am so much calmer. It really dysregulates your nervous system. I noticed that every time I was drinking coffee, I was feeling so anxious and I was feeling so tight in my chest and my shoulders would be like up here. And so when I switched over to cacao and also black tea, sometimes I'll make cha, I just felt so much calmer and I felt just more present and within my body. So that was a really big switch for me because I've drank coffee for years. And like I mentioned, I really enjoy coffee, but it's totally worth it if it's allowing me to live a calmer, more regulated life and not be so anxious all the time. The next thing I do are gratitude practices. I have talked about this a few times on my channel. I talk about this on my social media quite a bit because gratitude is something that will change your life. The first time I did gratitude, I was like, I don't really feel it, but the more and more I did it and the more consistent I was with it, the more I really, really started feeling so grateful to be living this life. Even on days that are tougher, where nothing's going right in my day, when I tune into gratitude now, I just feel it in my heart and everything just fizzles, fizzles out for me and I just look at things in a different way. Right now, I'm using this book, uh, which is really nicely, very kindly sent to me by the creator of this book. And this has gratitude practice in it. It is about five, uh, five, six prompts for gratitude in this every morning to do. So that really helped get me on track. I've been doing this book for about 
40 days now, 50 days, 40 or 50 days. And I'm so I'm halfway through, but I could definitely feel the difference after about a month of doing gratitude. So doing this every morning really sets me up for the day and really helps me feel more heart centered. The other thing that I recently started doing is morning pages. So this includes writing three pages in the morning in my notebook. I actually got this idea from the book, The Artist's Way. I haven't read the book yet, but I saw quite a few people talking about it on TikTok. And one thing that they mentioned is the morning pages. So I thought I'm not ready to read the book yet. I feel like just emotionally, personally, I, when I'm drawn to a book, I go to it and I'm not fully drawn to it yet, but this exercise sounded really interesting to me and I really love journaling and writing. So I wanted to include it in my day. So this is something I've actually been doing for just over a month now. And honestly, it's pretty amazing. Just writing out all your thoughts on paper first thing when you wake up and it just helps you get everything out of your mind and almost start with just a clean slate in your mind. The last thing that I do every morning for myself are affirmations and I call these vortex affirmations. The reason I call vortex affirmations, and I actually got the word vortex from a lot of Abraham Hicks videos where she helps you get into the vortex of feeling really good. But the reason I call them vortex affirmations is because I speak really uh, quickly to myself in a very persuasive, I guess, manner. And I stand in a power pose and I say things that are helping me get to my dream. For example, if you want to be making more money, something I do is I stand in a power pose, so hands on my hips, this, sounds, this feels really weird, but I would say, I'm rich, I deserve to be rich, I am wealthy, I'm abundant, I am taken care of, all my needs are taken care of. And so I would say these types of things for about three to four minutes nonstop. And I would just walk around my room doing this. And I've been doing this now for about a month. And honestly, I feel like my whole mindset has changed. And I feel like really, really, really confident that opportunities are coming to me and that things are changing for me. And I'm seeing a lot of different shifts in my life. Now, all these things that I've mentioned are part of my morning routine, but I also tap into them throughout my day, just when I'm feeling like I need a little bit of a lift sometimes. Another thing that I do is just check in with myself. So when I do this, I really just tap into my inner energy field and my body and try to see how I'm feeling. For me, I carry a lot of like anxiousness and tightness in my chest sometimes here. So my attention usually goes here and I try to really just calm myself down and really figure out what's going on that's causing this and try to sort of relieve that emotion and relax. I feel like doing this has allowed me to be more in touch with my body and also just feel more present and not live in such an anxious and hypervigilant state. Okay, now let's head into the evening. So my evening routine is quite simple, but very powerful. One rule that I have is that once I'm in the bedroom, I do not pick up my phone. I do not look at my phone. If anyone texts me, too bad. If it's an emergency, you can call me or you can call my husband, but I am not checking social media. I am not checking text messages. My phone is usually flat, the screen on the ground, and it's just me time. So the first thing that I do after I do my skincare and brush my teeth and everything, is that I do my stretches. Exercise is something that I have been on and off with for pretty much my entire life. It's something I really, really get into and then I take a break from it and that break turns into like a year or two years. So what I have found that I really, really enjoy are deep stretches. And so to incorporate more deep stretches into my life, I am trying to do them before I go to sleep in the evening. And what I found is that it's such a nice time to do them because it's at the end of the day, I don't have anything to worry about. I've let go of everything and I'm just really tuning into my body. And what I find is that as I'm doing each stretch and I'm holding each stretch for a few minutes, I can almost feel the energy within my body, like moving around, like down my back and through my legs and my arms and my shoulders. And it feels so, so good. It's such a great way to tune into your body and to see what's going on and stretch it out, you know, stretch your muscles out. And when I do this, what I find also is that I feel so centered and present afterwards. Once I finish my stretches, I head to bed and I do some journaling. And depending on how I feel, I'll either look at my vision board, which is just 
there's a mobile vision board. I've made a few of them for different areas of my life, which I keep on my phone. And I also have a vision board that I've made on Pinterest for myself. So I'll put on my manifestation music playlist on Spotify and I'll look through these on my phone to get me in the motion, to get me feeling the manifestation has come true. I either do that or I will do scripting. With scripting, what I found is it's a really interesting way to look at my vision and how I feel into it. And what I've found is that I actually don't have a ton of scenarios of what I want my future life to look like. I know what I want materially, but in terms of how I will live my day, I have one scenario that keeps coming up over and over again. So what I really like about scripting is that it makes me think of different ways I would live my life once I have everything that I want, right? Going food shopping, for example, we don't really think of that or picking my daughter up from school. And if you're new to scripting, what I recommend is writing it in a way as if you just ended your day and you're writing about the amazing day you've had having lived your manifestation. I also, before I go to sleep, just think through my day and I think about the thing that I'm most grateful for. What I really love about that exercise in the evening is that your mind is thinking about all the good things that happened to you throughout the day and trying to choose the best thing that happened to you to be grateful for. So that's a really good way to drift off to sleep. And then the last thing that I do is the Vipassana meditation. So Vipassana meditation is absolutely amazing. I started doing this a few years ago. I've been on and off with it. I'm trying really hard to be consistent with it over the last month or so, just over a month I think I've been doing this. But I have found this makes such a big difference to how I feel the next day and just even that evening. Vipassana meditation, the first time that I did it, I did it for about 90 days, I believe. And I did 15 minute meditation every single day where I just sat in silence. And what I found is that I actually could, by the end of it, audibly hear my intuition. It was really interesting. And then I stopped because I think there was a lot of stuff going on in my life at the time. And I just, at the time, couldn't manage to fit in any meditation. And that intuition went away and I just felt myself getting really wrapped up with my mind again, spiraling again. So I really wanted to bring this back into my life again. And right now I've moved on from 15 minutes, which I did for the first two weeks to now 30 minutes every evening before I fall asleep. And this just really helps me calm down, get into my body. It also sets me up to rest really nicely and have a really good sleep because the Vipassana meditation just totally it removes any thought from your mind when you're doing it. I'll put the link down below to the Vipassana meditation that I do. He also gives an explanation of what it is and how it can help you, but it's an absolute amazing meditation if you can do it for a longer period of time. And you have to give yourself grace because our minds are wild and they think a million things a minute. Like I mentioned earlier, you have to really find what works for you. For me, doing this half hour to 45 minutes in the morning and then doing about 45 minutes to an hour in the evening is what I really, really need for me to live a really calm and present life and also just trust in the universe and trust that everything is working out for me. It also really helps me just surrender. If this helps you, I would appreciate it if you could like my video and subscribe to my channel. Let me know your practices in the comments below and what you'd like to hear from me next.